<laughs> you a Brian Adams fan? No. <laughs> when Eastern culture meets Western adventure in the world's highest mountains, expect the unexpected. <laughs> like, hmm. That's the most expensive ski run I've ever had in my life. Ski the Himalayas, baby! We are on the road today to Grand Junction. I really can't believe that I'm almost at the airport, about to fly back to Nepal to go back to a mountain that gave us so much of a, you know, a fulfilling and really gratifying experience together, John, Josh, and I. Last year we were trying to do a new route on Barun say of the Northeast Face and to go ski. Well, it didn't quite end up the way we wanted it to because we got to 21,500 feet and got whooped by a storm. I got real sick and just, you know, we got off the mountain safely, we got off the mountain in control, which is awesome, but we still want to climb that mountain, we still want to ski that mountain. Um, for me personally, um, I'm a little bit, it turns out I'm a little bit more susceptible to altitude because I have an arachnoid cyst, which is a fluid filled sac floating around in the back of my brain. So, here is the cyst on Jonathan's brain, which is in the back of the head, adjacent to the cerebellum, which is the ballad center of the brain. If, if it was going to press on any brain structures, he would have symptoms on the right side of his body. Like he did uh, one time, he had numbness and tingling on the right side of his body. And he was like, so you have an arachnoid cyst in your brain. And you just kind of sit there like, I have what? And when the brain gets compressed, it can cause symptoms. All the way from a headache to coma, really. And uh, almost any kind of thing in between. I got my butt whooped last year. I couldn't feel half of my body, you know have any balance and that you know that's worrisome john miller is is back on it like i got nothing but love and respect for that guy he's tough he's strong he's cool and i just feel really lucky to know that we were able to come back and, and give this a shot there's a risk uh, because nobody there's no way to predict exactly what's going to happen but diamox is adds a, a bit of a safety factor i've seen uh a couple of climbers that have had some problems at altitude, and I've done MRIs and discovered the cysts. This is, this is probably the largest one I've seen. This is normal cerebellum here and here, and this is the cyst. It's almost as big as one lobe of the cerebellum. I just get to find out, you know, push myself, see what I can do, see what I can't do. I, mean, I might not get an answer this trip. I, even if I climb Barunse and have no problems, does that mean I'll never have a problem again? No! It just means that, hey, on this trip I didn't, and I can, you know, try again some other peak some other time. He needs to keep an eye on himself, and you need to keep an eye on him and see how things go and come down at the first sign of trouble. I mean, I've been to altitude now. I, I, know, I know that I have to really watch myself, and Ben's really got to watch me just to, to watch to make sure I'm not getting any symptoms. I want to stay healthy. I want to stay fit. I want to feel good, and I don't want to rush anything. Somewhere in there... That process, that philosophy should lead us to the summit of 23,390 foot Barunse by the Southeast Ridge. We uh, just got back from heli skiing about three days ago, and now we're flying out to Kathmandu on, you know, three different aircraft, probably a 36 hour flight, so it's gonna be a uh, hell of a journey getting, getting on over there. Here to Kathmandu Airport. I hope you're ready for this Brute 2010. Yeah, all right. Yeah. An audience, this is how John and I roll. We uh, like to come in and do a little commentary. John, what do you yeah. think, man? So finally, we've gone through all this stuff. It feels awesome. I mean, we're kind of in, in a daze. We've been flying and traveling for 36 hours. Oh, we have our own rooms. If you can believe this, but actually each one of us has a room. We are high rolling Nepali style. It's not so bad. We always get there late and then we hang out and we have a couple of beers and some chow mein. Babu treats us so well when we come over. But, and here we are. We're back. We're eating food. We're drinking Everest beer. This is the way we show up every time. Everest beer. Haha. It's tradition, man. It's like.
It's like being stage struck, honestly. I, I won't bring it up again. Well, no, you're fine. You're fine, man. It's, it's just, so this is Jeff Marsh. He's a podcast viewer from the rest of Everest, and we met him in Kathmandu. Pretty awesome. Really cool guy, and totally just out of the blue, we sat down, and there he was. Man, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Karma said you were here. This is what happens when you come to Nepal. You start meeting people. Yeah, people, if you watch the podcast, I'm always psyched to hang out with Nepal. <laughs> Something else we do, a little shopping in Kathmandu. You got your beaners, you got you got pulleys for crack rescue, you've got fixed, you've got some that switch, you got draws, you got nuts, you got pretty much all the old school stuff, and then a bunch of Russian things that you can't understand. <laughs> some people like complimentary colors, I kinda like just loud and obnoxious. This is an archaic piece of 1990s nostalgia that today everyone tries to purchase uh, from I love me. it. Everyone tries to get this pole from me, and it's not happening. No kidding. And it's a good thing. I mean, Ben loves his condor. I've tried to steal his condor from him. I tried to buy that one. He decided to get it. But this shop has got a little bit of everything in, in Kathmandu you might need for climbing. We love just going in and seeing what random piece of history is sitting on the walls. It goes back away. I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to keep it in my private stock. It's gonna it's gonna go in a mountaineering museum in my house, where I have pictures of mountain harbor athletes over a fireplace. Cryogenically frozen. <laughs> Cryogenically frozen fingers of people. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned to shop when you get here and just be ready to eat who knows what. I have no idea what, what that is. Ginger tea. Do you know what it is? She doesn't either. Yes, please. So we've got some coconut. Got, yeah, a couple of these. A bag of gummy teeth. Yeah, look at that. A couple of minestrones. Six different soups. Dude, look at that. Cheese spread. Melt in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We're excited. Dude, that sounds pretty good. That sounds perfect. Yeah. Ginger, I'm sorry. Chocolate covered raisins. Chocolate toffee. Strawberry chewy candy. We, we, we came to the conclusion after last year that we didn't bring enough variety of foods with us. We mm -hmm. brought a lot and good stuff. Lot, and lots of good cliff products and things. But, well... <laughs> Your stomach does some weird things at altitude, <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't matter how much you love it, you just don't want to deal with it. And things that you don't normally like might look delicious, so having a variety of things is key. It's like, you want to eat something, and it doesn't matter what it is, just eat. <laughs> can, can I eat something hazelnut with cocoa, even when I feel like I'm going to throw up? Yes! <laughs> and peanut butter? Yeah. yeah. Pretty well said. Hey, you can eat here? Right here. Bye. Uh, casually and in a pretty nonchalant way. We're gonna eat pretty good. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you so much. So we've learned over the years that you got to shop in Kathmandu. You've got to deal with it. Absolutely. They've got everything you need is already there. And you don't have to ship it. It's a good variety. It's awesome. And I think the best part about it is it gets you really dialed in on getting on the trail, getting your things ready. That's a big component of this. As we get forward into this adventure, folks, we're going to hit the high mountains in the Himalayas. John and I are going to continue to join you 
and each episode we're going to be telling you the story so that you get a sense of the adventure while we cut a film. That's right. Well, I'm Ben Clark, John Miller. Hey, good to talk to everybody again and hopefully you watch the rest of the episodes. See you next week.